I finished another little project using Blender 2.80 and a titsy bit of Blender 2.81, and I thought it'd be nice to share some of my findings going from the initial sketch to the final render. I like the idea of being able to do these kind of breakdowns for finished projects, as I almost certainly forget certain things or things I've learned throughout the process. Uh, and hopefully this will kind of solidify things in my mind a little bit better, and I'll also have something to refer back to. I usually have two types of non-commercial projects on the go. One is passion projects and the other is procrastination projects. This I would consider a procrastination project as I really should be working on this five minute short idea I have called Isometropolis PD, but I really wanted to have the satisfaction of working on and completing something within just a few days. Uh, the modeling was pretty simple. Um, I loosely referred to this sketch, um, trying to leave myself a bit of room for further refinement when modeling, uh, leaning on subdivision surfaces quite a lot to create that nice smooth shape. The only issue I had while creating the different elements was unionizing the, the ears and the nose to the head, just because I wanted to retain that super smooth feel. And as soon as you, you know, um, up res the geometry and try and merge things together, you lose a certain amount of flexibility afterwards uh, when it comes to tweaking things. So instead, I chose to just not join them at all. You know, they're just sort of there as separate meshes, uh, which I think works okay. The only issue uh, I had with that was that the subsurface scattering on random walk caused some bit of some funky effects, uh, so I had to switch back to the previous method. After applying mirror modifiers and setting up some UVs, I resisted the urge to jump into Substance Painter, instead choosing to stay within Blender 2.80 to better learn uh, the workflows and processes involved in texture painting within Blender itself. I mainly use the draw, fill, and smudge tools to create effects, occasionally using selects in edit mode to affect paint masks again in the texture mode. I feel like as well I should use the workspaces more in Blender 2.80, but for some reason I can't program my mind into using them. It feels similar to how OS X and Windows have these multiple desktop layouts. I can see, you know, the massive advantage of using them, but but I just can't remember to for some reason. The hair took a bit of trial and error to get looking okay. Uh, it consists of two emitters, one fairly simple one for the uh, tuft of hair at the back and the fringe or bangs. And the other one was originally, uh, again, emitted from a mesh, but the mesh was originally metaballs that I was using to sort of mass out the form, converted to mesh and then scaled down along their normals. Um, the main setting that I used to get the curl was on the tuft setting and using spiral that helped a hell of a lot to get the, the, the sort of curly hair look. On the render as well, it came out a bit jittery. I thought this may have been because of some rogue weight maps here and there, but on double checking, it seemed that wasn't the case. Um, so I, I'm only, I, I think maybe because they didn't bake it or something, um, and interpolation will cause issue frame to frame. However, on reflection, I kind of like this effect. As you can see, the whole thing is going for this kind of stop motion feel, and it feels like the slight movement in hair now and again just adds to that effect. There's not a huge amount I can say here other than the fact that the Rigify add-on is amazing and would it enable me to quickly align the armature to an already posed character, generate the rig and be pretty much ready to go. Uh, the only things I did do was removed um, unnecessary bones for me and then added bones to the face to control things like the glasses and a few to the backpack and various other items. Um, Parenting the mesh to the armature with automatic weights uh, with this character also worked pretty well, um, leaving me to, I guess, manually tweak some of the places like, like the t-shirt and the backpack, which I wanted to stay fairly rigid so they're based off one bone for deformation. The ground surface setup was a combination of ambient occlusion as well as a radial transparency gradient to fade off the shadow from the direct key light. 
The grass consisted of five blades with a vertex color map uh, gradient plugged into a color ramp to make it just slightly paler at the root of the grass. And that was then populated over this plane using hair particles um, and a density and scale map using bitmap textures, which I must admit I'm still kind of confused about using. Um, Maybe in the future everything would be done with nodes, which for me would make the process a bit more streamlined. The bee is pretty much a ball with painted stripes on um, and a simple and simple hair particles with a set of wings that have a base shape for up and a shape for down, and then just alternating them with a cycle offset. I hope this video was helpful, or at least mildly interesting. If it does end up being useful, I'll likely put up more of this kind of breakdown style video for other projects. So stay tuned for that. Oh, and here's a quick Eevee version. Thanks for watching.